Hello everyone, in this video I am going to show you how to create a stateless web application with Spring Security and JWT. So the way I am going to create the project is first I am going to create a web application with simple endpoint then I am going to add security, Spring Security to it to secure the endpoints. Uh, to add the security I will be using user name and password authentication. The username and password will be stored in the database. Later on, I'll add the JSON web token uh, to create the web token and later on show how to use the token to request for resource. So let's get started. So first, I'm going to go start the spring.io and in there, I'm going to select Gradle project. Here's the programming language Kotlin, use the latest version, uh, give it group name, artifact name, and uh, for dependency, I'm going to use web. I'm going to use security. I'm going to use JPA. And for now, use the in memory database H2. So that's pretty much it, all I need for now. Later on, I will add JWT. So let's open the pro create the project and open it using IntelliJ IDEA. So this is what the project gives me, uh, basic build.gradle file and uh, barebone main. Let's create the controllers. Here I'm going to add two controller, one public controller and one protected controller. So the public controller has one URL, public, which gives public data and the protected controller uh, is slash protected, gives protected data. So now if I run the project and go to a HTTP client like Postman and go to slash public, localhost public, then I get the public data and if I go to protected, I will get the protected data. So what I want to do now is this version of uh, this URL will be open so anyone can access. But to access this URL, uh, user needs to be authenticated. So for that, let's add the Spring Security first. So I have the Spring Security dependency. Now let's configure the project. Now to add security, I'm going to create first a package called config. And inside it, I'm going to create the security config class. So this security config class has uh, one annotation, enable web security, and it extends the web security configure adapter. And I'm going to override the configure method. Uh, these are pretty straightforward Spring Security. So I'm going to use the Spring Security. I'm going to disable the CSRF because I don't need for stateless web application. And session management stateless, define it. And allow the public URL for everyone and every other URL will be authenticated by Spring Security. Now let's restart the application and go to the HTTP client. So now the public URL still works. And the protected URL gives me access denied. Now I want to add the authentication mechanism so that user can authenticate via username and uh, password. So let's do that first. So for that first I need to add a DTO. Which is a simple authentication request that accepts username and password from the user and later on we'll be using this to authenticate the user. Next I'm gonna need a model that I'm gonna store in the database and get data from the database. These are pretty straightforward. Next I'm gonna add the repository to access this auth user. So this is the auth user repository and I have created one method uh, which I'll use later 
uh, find by username next I'm going to add a service user detail service which actually implements the user detail service this is a detail service implementation which is named as user detail service and this calls uh, the overrides the load user by username which actually calls uh, the find user by username that we have just created in the repository so what I have done over here uh, is if username uh, is mm, found with the given username by the user that we are going to pass from the controller the controller is not created yet uh, so using this authentication request I'm gonna send the username and password and based on that username uh, it will look for the username and if it finds the user then it will return uh, the user with username and uh, the password uh, that is stored in the model class and uh, for the authorities I'm uh, sending empty uh, list so we don't need to deal with the authorities right now and if the user is not found with the given username then it will simply give an error next I'm going to create the authentication controller which will auto add the authentication manager this is not configured yet we will configure it in a moment and the user detail service that we have just created and it will have a post mapping where it gets the username and password through the authentication request DTO and uh, if the authentication uh, request I mean username and password is correct then it will use the uh, username and password authentication token object and send it via the authentication manager and use the method authenticate to authenticate the user if the username and password is okay then it will return okay otherwise it will give an error so now let's configure the authentication manager now to set the authentication manager we have to change the security config add a couple of pins one pin is authentication manager and we have to auto -air a function which is configure authentication and uh, you have to auto -air the user detail service over here now this is uh, returning the super authentication manager pin so we are not changing much over here but we are configuring this pin with the user detail service of our user detail service and we are using decrypt password encoder so that should be enough for the security now the error is gone next we are going to add the initial data that we are going to use to authenticate the user so here I have used the authentication repository to save a new user username Linus and password is 123456 the bigger password encoder we have used which we have configured on the security config now let's run the application now if we open the rest client and go to uh, localhost auth uh, make a post request with body uh, if we put nothing we will get an error 403 uh, now we need to send the proper JSON format over here so if we give wrong password or wrong username we will again get the error but if we send uh, proper username and password we should get 200 so the reason why we are getting the 403 is because I forgot to add the path to the security so let's add that and restart the application now it should give me 200 and it does and now what we want is to send a token later on this token will be used over here to get the forbidden data so let's add the token now to add the token we need the JWT library so I'm gonna add the library to our builder cradle
to refresh the Gradle project. Next, let's add a simple token utility class. So this is going to be a simple utility class where you select the secret, you select the um, some create some method for getting username from token. Uh, this is using the claim from the token. This is simple JWT. So this is a pretty straightforward. Uh, it is also returning user details from token. It also has a method for generating token, which will uh, generate the token with some claims like subject or username and the creation date. You can add more uh, claims like this and finally use again the JWT library with uh, JWT library to generate the token with our secret and uh, the algorithm. Let's go to the authentication controller. Here we are going to add uh, this token util class. And using this token util class, we are going to return uh, the token. So now we should be able to get a token from the request if the username and password is correct. So let's run the application. Now open the REST client and go to the authentication. And if we give wrong value, we will get error as expected. And if we give right value, we should get a token, which we do. So the authentication controller part is done. Now when the request comes to this URL, we need to access this token and if this token is validated, then we want to return the result. So let's add a header called authorization and put the token. Now it is not giving me the result because this functionality is not done. Uh, so we need to add the functionality. So let's add the functionality. So for this, we're gonna use a filter, which is called authentication token filter so this filter is gonna check uh, if the authentication token so this is a variable name let's add this variable name into your application main or anywhere else doesn't matter so it checks if the authentication token if uh, a token is coming through the authorization header uh, then it uh, checks whether uh, this token is valid with get user details from token so if the given token is invalid then we'll get an error because it is using this method get username from token which will again use this get claims from token, which will use our secret. So if our secret doesn't match, then it will give us error. And if it is okay, then it will give the proper claims and proper username. So let's go back. So you get the user details and from the user details, again, uh, similar things that we have done in the authentication controller. We'll create the username and password authentication token with user details and for now credentials and authorities are not actually required. Uh, so authorities will be an empty list. So that's good enough for now. And uh, uh, for user authentication details, we are going to set the web authentication resource and build uh, details with the HTTP request. And again, similar to the uh, auth controller, we'll set the context. And if there is something wrong, we'll print uh, the stack trace and let the username that the token is invalid. Now to add this filter with our request, we need to change the security configuration. So here we can add another pin which is called authentication filter bean. And we are gonna add this filter 
before each request like so and that's pretty much it now let's run the application open the risk client now we are getting the protected data so if we give a wrong uh, information over here maybe a wrong token we'll again get the 401 unauthorized but if we give the right one we'll get the data we can create another token and use the token over here to get the protected data so there are a lot of ways to configure uh, the JWT token uh, like I have shown in the token utils so you can add a lot more claims to it and validate your request um, based on your needs you can put the uh, user authorities in the token you can do a lot of things depending on your needs so this is the basics I hope you understood it all and if you did not then feel free to ask in the comment below I'll be happy to answer your question regarding anything in this video so that's it that's all for this video I hope you liked it if you have any question again feel free to ask in the comment below so that's all for this bye bye